There are certain movies with small details that we still don't understand. Even if the films themselves are mostly good, it's hard to unsee these discrepancies once they've been pointed out. The Hangover is a modern comedy classic and an impressive feat of storytelling. By the end of the movie, everything that happens is explained in a way that remains far-fetched but somehow manages to also make sense. Except for the chicken. And it's not like that was the most complicated thing in the movie. The script's conclusion managed to put together a coherent story explaining how a tiger gets in the bathroom, but there's not a peep about a lowly chicken. Viewers aren't the only ones wondering about this foul question. The cast members are also confused. When Ed Helms was asked in an interview if he had any backstory for the chicken, he said, "...it's just one of the great MacGuffins of the movie, and I love it. Chickens are a symbol of chaos." That's great, but it would still be nice to have an explanation. The question of Han Solo's fate helped make The Empire Strikes Back one of cinema's great cliffhangers, and by now we all know what happened at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. But if you look closely at the setup, you might wonder what the heck the original plan was. The droids are sent in and captured, and they're carrying Luke's lightsaber. Lando Calrissian is working as a guard, Leia is dressed as a bounty hunter, and Chewbacca is in chains. Luke knocks on the front door. Even if you accept the logic behind Lando being sent in as a scout, there are still plenty of questions to consider. Doesn't this plan require Luke to rescue Chewie and the droids as well? And if he was planning on walking right in through the front door, why wouldn't he just keep his lightsaber handy? And why wouldn't his droid gifts be outright sold or crushed? Also, why send Leia in disguised as a bounty hunter when Lando was already there in disguise? Couldn't Lando have just freed Han? It's a good thing Return of the Jedi had Ewoks to keep us distracted by their cuteness. Oh, do I really don't think we should rush it? In the 1984 horror comedy Gremlins, the creatures that turn into the Gremlins, known as the Mogwai, are adorable, and lots of people would probably keep them as pets if they could. They come with a few rules, though, and while those rules seem fairly straightforward, when you look at the Mogwai care guide closely, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You're not supposed to feed them after midnight, but when does it stop being after midnight? Perhaps at sunrise? But the time for sunrise changes a little bit every day and depends on what part of the planet you're in. And what exactly causes the reaction that comes with eating after midnight? Does it have to do with the sun, or the moon, or maybe the tides? Details matter, and ignoring them is how you kickstart the apocalypse. With Mokwai comes much responsibility. I cannot sell him at any price. There are also reasons to get nitpicky about the other no-no of not getting the Mogwai wet. This isn't as straightforward as it seems, either, considering the scene of the gremlins out happily caroling away in the snow. Last time we checked, snow melts into water, and this whole scene seems like it should have more consequences than it actually does. From a certain perspective, Indiana Jones' interference in Raiders of the Lost Ark actually kept Adolf Hitler alive and thereby led to World War II, but you could maybe sort of justify what he did. Considering how dedicated he is to relic hunting, he might not have wanted to put a valuable artifact like the Ark of the Covenant in Hitler's greasy little mitts, even if it was just long enough to melt his face off, and even if he probably could have gotten it back. But Indy had another chance to do some serious damage to some real bad guys, and this one can't be so easily explained away. In The Last Crusade, he has to choose the real Holy Grail from a selection of drinking vessels. The right one heals and gives immortality, but the wrong one kills. There's nothing that says the fake grails can't be removed from the chamber, though. So why didn't Indy fill his bag with fake grails and then send them off to Hitler and the rest of the Nazi party? There were a ton of fake grails, and Indy could have saved the world from a whole lot of hurt if he'd thought ahead. He chose poorly. The Shining is consistently rated among the scariest movies ever made, and it's a well-deserved badge of honor. It's generally accepted that it's packed full of meaningful imagery and hidden messages, which could be discussed in great detail all day. But there's one blink-and-you'll-miss-it moment that's particularly worth mentioning. The man in the bear costume glimpsed through an open door and caught in a compromising position with a snappily dressed man. What the literal heck is going on there? Okay, it's not hard to guess what is literally happening, but the deeper meaning of this moment is a little less clear. Director Stanley Kubrick doesn't do anything without having a good reason. There's a similar character in the Stephen King novel that the film is based on, but for some reason the movie changes the dog costume to a bear costume and proceeds to show this guy only once. It's an unforgettable moment, but fans have been left to their own devices for decades to theorize what it's really all about. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.